Hi, everybody. How are you tonight? Hi, I am Susan Carlson, and welcome to my studio. And welcome to this edition of Thursday Night in My Studio Live. And happy holidays to everyone out there. Tonight is a special event, our year-end wrap-up featuring quilts by you, inspired by our Thursday night presentations, spirals and faces and other creations. It's a huge lineup. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to take questions as we go along. So if you have a question about a particular quilt that's up, ask it right away while we're looking at it. So Tom's gonna keep um, an eye out for those questions. And We've got some great submissions for you from you guys. Thank you so much. It took Tom a little while to figure out how to organize them by subject, by name, because some of you created multiple collages um, and there's quite a few of them. And I can't repeat exactly what he said, but you know, a lot. Um, but he settled with subjects. First, there's spirals, um, the facial features, um, then customizing a celestial portrait pattern, and then everything else in an alphabetical order by your last names. Congratulations to everyone for getting something creative and positive done this year. It was just amazing to see all of the submissions and we wanted to get everyone in. Um, and I felt so good as I looked through these photos that these Thursday night presentations did get some positivity out there during a year that's been fraught with such uncertainty and angst. So thank you for what you've given back to me through showing up for these evenings. Um, for, 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 for being there, for your comments, for driving me to come up with more subjects um, for these presentations. Um, remember, this wasn't planned this year. <laughs> so, and finally, for tonight's submissions to the slideshow. It's a great one. Um, even though this is the last Thursday night presentation for 2020, I hope you'll continue learning from the recordings because as you'll see in the upcoming slides, they did what we intended to work as an online learning resource available to you anytime and anywhere, especially from your home. <laughs> so now let's get to the show. All right, so we have spirals to start out. And this is submitted by Julie Anderson. Now these aren't all finished. It's not like a finish line thing, um, but uh, they're, you know, many of them are in progress and that's what I wanted. I wanted the submissions just to show what, what people are up to and what they're doing because all of this is so inspiring to everyone else. So Julie Anderson, I know is a, a fellow Mainer. Um, she's been in a few of my classes and um, I've talked about this one. There's a few of them that have been in previous um, posts or, um, Yep, and, uh, but it, well, anyway, I wanted to just say, have been in previous posts, but this one, I just loved how the value, she's creating value on this. Um, so Sue Sire, or Seer, Seer, I'm sorry, Seer, I, I mispronounced names. I'm, I'm sorry, ahead of time for everybody, um, to everybody. Um, so you can read there, um, she was using this as part of, as a recuperative um, exercise. So you can do collage when you can't move around like knee surgery. So, um, and you know, you can prop it up on your recliner and this is a great one. The spiral projects are all ones that I recommend as kind of a beginning uh, to learn a little bit about um, fabric collage and how to work with it. Here, Karen has worked some lovely little novelty um, fabrics into her spiral. Uh, there's all sorts of, you know, little animals in there and flowers. Flowers are great for these things. I'll give you a chance to kind of read on your own and I'll talk about these. This is very um, soft looking and that's another thing I like about spirals. Like I said, it's a really good beginning exercise. Um, if you haven't done one yet, um, I certainly, I always recommend doing spirals. And we also have had some, uh, some uh, at least a couple um, blog posts on spirals. I know this one was in one of the blog posts, Donna LaFleur. And uh, these are fiddleheads. If you don't know what fiddleheads are, uh, we have them in Maine. I'm not quite sure where Donna lives, but um, probably one of the Northern states or maybe even into Canada or something. Um, and these are... Uh, it's the ostrich ferns as they come up in the spring and you can cut them and steam them and eat them and actually have to cook them twice because otherwise they're um, not as um, 
I don't know, it's something you have to do. You have to get some toxins out of them, that's all. <laughs> but they're really delicious. And she has made a beautiful rendition of, of these, um, these wonderful little plants. Maureen Logston, um, and here she's uh, worked with, she's been coming to the Thursday night classes, but then also has a Serendipity Quilts book. And I know a lot of you guys have been following for me for years and years, and I thank you for that. This one is lovely. It's very, it's like moving. You know, she's got those lines in it that kind of give like that jittery sort of look. So it's like a kind of a caffeinated spiral here um, in the springtime. So lovely. Um, Linda Roberts. So Linda was in the blog post with this piece not quite done, and she's now finished it. And I just love the story of it. And if you look, it's it's an eel. And so this, she calls it spireal because it was part of a memory of snorkeling with her grandson. And I think that that was just so lovely to be doing something like that. And I've seen people turn these spirals into snakes. Did you reorganize it? Did you reorganize it? Then you gotta go back to the beginning. Why? Because you do start at the beginning. Oh. Okay, well, you know what, we're not going to go back to the beginning. So Tom tells me that I kind of started in the middle of the, the slideshow. Um, so these are all that have been in the blog post, correct? Yes. Okay, and we'll just go back to the ones that weren't in the blog post as soon as I get done with this one. Okay, so um, anyway, Linda um, did her an eel with, with that one. Um, sorry. Oop. Darn it. Tom, get me back. Okay, there we go. All right, did an eel. I've also seen people do snakes and, um, you know, other sorts of, of I can't, oh, no, I can't remember. But anyway, there are other things that work. Oh, a snail. There we go, a snail. I knew there was something else. And can work well as if you want to do something a little more representational. Um, Sandy says, you know, she understands why I have people do a spiral before um, doing something else. Because spirals, they, they can give you more to think about than um, you, you think a spiral is going to do. Um, so in other words, they're a really good exercise for moving into something a little more difficult. And remember, you can go through these later um, on the recording in case, you know, I just know that there's a lot of them coming up. So <laughs> I don't wanna run out of time and keep you here for a couple hours. Okay, um, so yeah, so Adele, it's not quite finished on this one. She has an anagalate, an, Anagal an analogous, an analogous, analogous. Thank you. I <laughs> my brain cramped on on pronouncing a that word that word that <laughs> color scheme. So those are colors that are next to each other on a spiral on a um, color wheel. So that's something that you can also work with when you're working on these spirals is, is give yourself a challenge of one sort or another, maybe using some sort of a color um, or a color combination, maybe things that you don't usually work with or things that you just love to work with. Um, this is multicolored and Sandy has used um, value in, in helping to separate the different colors. I always say um, you don't need, now Tom's gonna take me back up to the beginning of the of the um of our of our uh, slideshow here so there we go all right so okay all right well these um tom tells me that i'm doing okay here um and with time wise and that was good so all of those that you just saw that whole grouping was in their own blog um, post. So you can check that. I think November 7th, right, mm -hmm. is what we, um, it was on November 7th, Saturday, November 7th. So you can go back and read all about it. And there's even more how to's um, because we, like I said, we ran out of space for the, the slideshow here. But um, Peggy, so she's, you know, in progress here. And um, yep, so <laughs> yeah, so you do have to have a, um, the glue can't be dried in order to glue everything down. So that's kind of funny. So yeah, Peggy, that, that was, that's good. And um, yep, a different flower. You know, she used flowers for that one. And Judy used flowers here too. And flowers and leaves are all really wonderful things to, um, to, to, to cut and use in your spiral. Because in 
and everything that I do, all the different subjects, I'm cutting the patterns out of it and using the patterns to help for contours and lights and darks and um, you know the contrasts. And so this is a really good way of getting yourself used to using patterns to help define and, um, and supplement a, a subject. So Judy, this is a very, you know, dark light contrast between the, the spiral and the background. And when you're making a spiral, the background becomes another spiral. So that's something you can kind of keep in mind. Here it is all finished up. So very nice, Judy. Um, Linda, uh, so thank you for coming all year to the classes and I'm glad you finally jumped in. The, the spiral workshop, or I'm sorry, the spirals were talked about in the Is It Drafty In Here series where I talk about going from first, second to third and then fourth drafts. So as Linda says, this is her first draft from the week of, yeah, of, of that that series and um, yep, starry starry night. I can definitely see that. I think we talked about this one in yeah a few of these we did talk about in one of those um, follow up um, series. We had a little student slideshow, and um, J Jerry here has uh, um, taken the photograph and turned it black and white, which is a really good way of seeing how your values are working for you. So you can see here, Jude, uh, Jerry has um, very, you know, the dark on the inside, it helps add contour because dark recedes, light comes forward. And she can see how that's working and if it's working to how she wanted it to be. So that's a great thing to do. Um, Betsy here has a very op-ed sort of, of spiral. I just, op art, oh yeah. Op art, not op ed, op art. So good thing I've got Tom here to, <laughs> to clarify what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and Leslie, so we saw this um, going from one week to the next. Um, the, the left was, was one week and then she resubmitted it the next week and she had changed it a lot. And that just goes to show that you try things out and be it a spiral or be it somebody's portrait, you're still gonna try stuff out. So you may as well get a little practice doing something that doesn't count as much as, you know, your, your grandchild's portrait. All right, so Gloria, I love this one in how she had um, a very, you know, it, it's not a white background, it's a very interesting background, but it is um, uh, less colorful. And so that kind of allows the spiral itself to kind of dance around the, on the, the quilt. And again, she's also used those little lines to kind of create movement, which is, which is great. Um, Christine, now this is a new one that's been submitted. So, um, so yep, and right. Yep, and I love working with textures too. I think so many of us are out there um, working with fabric because we like the feel of it. And it looks like Christine has added even more with the beading. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, she said it's in the works and it'll be really fun to see it when it's done. And definitely any of you that are finishing these things up, we're going to be, you know, we're, we do finish line blog posts all the time. And if we get a bunch of spirals that come in, we'll make a special spiral blog, um, finish line blog post for you guys. So this is lovely, Christine. Oh, here's a detail. Very nice. A few of these were coming in like this afternoon. <laughs> I don't know when Christine's came in, but I hadn't seen that until this afternoon. Lovey, I love the name. And oh yes, I remember this was with your um, fabrics for the, ba the, the baby's room. Yes. So I'd love to see that one finished, Lovey and Barb. Um, this is a, a friend of mine. And I think I mentioned at that time that she uses it. She used making this um, spiral as, uh, as therapy for herself. So it's great this, these times, um, this whole year, I mean, you know, I've been promoting the, the spiral. We made the spiral um, e-workshop, um, kind of separated that from the masterclass manual and made it a standalone e-workshop this year because I think spirals are such a great therapy and you can just kind of immerse yourself into the whole process of, of making these designs. And spirals have wonderful um, meaning to them. I mean, they are those you know, great fiddleheads I talked about before, but also a spiral is significant of a 
um, new beginning. And so I'm thinking about making one over the over New Year's myself. So anybody who wants to join me, we can kind of, you know, work in spirit together. So this is a Halloween spiral. You know, again, you get um, it's you can use all sorts of novelty prints in it. And so it's a great way to play with some of these fabrics we have. And really, it's all about playing. And when you play with stuff, you learn things. Um, Char's spiral, or spiral, I remember um, from before, I looked really, really close at it and it looks like it's all one fabric, but she's actually cut apart one, one fabric and rearranged it in more of a contour, you know, to, to um, really um, take advantage of the contours to help move the spiral around. Oh, yep, and then here she is with different sorts of backgrounds. I wonder what you chose, Char. I remember you asked me what you were gonna do. You have to send it as a finished, for the finish line sometime. And here now she's done another rock around the dock. Yep, this, this is a great contrast between all those, you know, um, fluffy little flowers and very stark straight edged background. So that's really interesting. Oh, and this one's finished. Look at that, finished and quilted. All right, thank you, Char. And then here we've got um, Maria as a first draft. And remember we talked about cropping on this one. So if something, um, you know, we talked about backgrounds in one of the, the, one of the series was all about backgrounds. So, um, whoops, uh, Julie, have a spiral. Okay, Julie, um, I see Julie's got a question coming in. So I'll stop and address that when we get back to her spiral. Okay, um, so Maria, this is lovely. I bet you turned it into the black and white and you can really see the value well. So remember, whatever you're working on in, in fabric collage, turn it to black and white and see what see how it all looks. Kelly, so Kelly, I've worked with Kelly now. Um, in coaching as well. So here's her spiral. And so she used fa fabrics that were not her favorites, fabrics and colors. And I love this. I, I happen to like those fabrics an awful lot. So, <laughs> um, but that's a good exercise. You know, it's pushing you to try new things. And Karen, there we go. She has the very soft look again with the flowers and the background. And I know we have a finished um, version of this coming up too, I remember. I think we put this in the blog post maybe. Um, yep, and there is the, the finish. Now I can see that Karen, I mean, there's, when you take photographs, they're influenced by the, the ambient light. So I know that this, you know, it changed color quite a bit, but also Karen did put um, some uh, glitter tool over top, it looks like. See, it's got a little glittery effect to it. So um, it probably gave it a little bit of a warmer cast, though I'm sure the colors are a lot more where they were before. But that's something you can do if you want to kind of give an overall little kind of dress it up a little bit. Um, there's glitter tool that you can add to the top of these and um, um, or overlay. Okay, so now this is where we were to begin with. And Julie had a question, Tom, just wait. Okay, um, so Julie had a question. I have a spiral. I wonder if it's the same spiral, Julie. I'm all ready to put on a canvas. Do I put glue all over the canvas and stick it on? <laughs> well, that's one way to do it, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so have you finished the edge yet is the question. Um, if you finished the edge already, then yeah, you could do that. Um, I did that with some smaller uh, series of, of little quilts that I mounted onto, um, onto canvas, some painted canvas, and that worked really well. And I did kind of tack them down on the corners just as a little extra precaution. Oh, same spiral. Yes, all done. Okay, then yeah. Um, so if... I guess the other question is, is there, is there any of the, the canvas showing or is it to the exact, did you, did you make the top of the quilt, the, the finished top of the quilt, the same size as the, the canvas? So that would be the question because if you made it, well, mm -hmm. yeah, what is it? No canvas showing. Okay. All right. Then um, not even the sides, Julie. <laughs> The sides are showing, you might want to paint it, okay, just so that when you see it from the, from the side, at an angle, at whatever, you know, chance, you know, view it might be, then it looks pretty. 
and maybe a blue, you know, something that basically kind of fades away to the background. So maybe a dark blue, something that picks up some of your blues in the background is probably what I would do. And then, yeah, you can just glue it right on. And if you feel that you wanted to add a little more, you could stitch it, like go straight up through the canvas and then back down through the quilt in areas where it wouldn't show too much. Not if it's already finished. So Tom was asking about stretching around the canvas, but if it already has um, a binding on it, then it's kind of too late for that. Um, oh, and Karen asks, uh, oh, Karen clarified on the one before, um, glitter rainbow tool. It changed your look completely. Okay, so let, let me go back. How do I do this? Two go backs, so yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, um, so this is Karen replied back to me. She did use a glittered rainbow tool on top of the spiral. It changed the look completely. So, whoops. Ah, what did I do, Tom? Okay, there, there, that's it. So yes, if it changed it that much, so if that's not just a lighting for your photograph issue, it did change it a lot and you're right. That's a whole different spiral. And you say you can't decide if you like it better or not, but I did like the changing colors from the rainbow tool. Okay, well, there you go, you know? Um, so yeah, now I can see it. You can see um, kind of diagonal upper left to lower right, that yellow. Um, <clears throat> I know it, I'm familiar with this tool. And so if you look, it goes kind of yellow out to like a green and blue purple. And yeah, that is nice. And it dresses up the background in a very nice way. So, um, so yeah, I guess it's an exercise, right? You learned. Um, you had it one way, you've got photographs of it so that you can look back at it. Um, and it's a learning experience. So if you like the rainbow, then you just go for it and you enjoy it right the way it is. Um, and Julie gets back to me. Okay, we're just gonna go here to Julie's. And she said, there's no binding on it. So Julie, what I would suggest is um, go into, where do we have the stretched on canvas stuff, Tom? Finishing. Do we have it in finishing? Okay, so there's a blog on finishing your quilt and it talks about stretching onto canvas. It's, it's too much for me to get into without like actually demonstrating something. It also could be in the hang it up might also be in the hang it up blog post. So check those out. And, um, and if you and if you can't find it or have other questions, just, you know, let us know, just contact us. Okay, now, um, and then Barb Grant. Okay, so Barb, I'm gonna, Tom, I'm just gonna go forward to Barb's because I know it's in this section. We're gonna do a really little review here of the ones that were in the blog post before. Like I said, you can read more about these, um, but we're gonna go through and get to the portraits next as soon as I find Barb's. What happened to Barb's? I think she went through this one. Oh, okay. Um, okay, Tom is going to find, oh, there it is, down toward the bottom, red and green. All right. So Barb says, I finished the actual spiral. It has some dimensional background on it. Now, which thread, since it's very pink and very green, each will show on the other. Do I try to stay green on the green and pink on the pink and blue for the background? <laughs> well, Barb, you could do whatever you want. Um, you know, with when, if you have a question like that, go for something variegated. There you go. You know, then it kind of shows up on some, kind of shows up on the other. I do like, I mean, joking aside, I do like variegated threads on these spirals because I just like that added um, serendipity of where the different colors are gonna show up because I don't know and it's so, something I can't plan and it's a good way of letting go. And that's as a, this is a good exercise of learning how to let go as well, letting go of that perfection and trying to make everything work just so because it doesn't always do that. Um, so, on this one, if you wanted to really bring out the depth of the colors, then probably yes, go red on red and green on green. But probably since green moves into blue, I'd be tempted to keep going with the green into the blue because that looks like well, that's what's happening. It's the green, the green spiral is going to be blending into the blue and becoming blue as it goes around 
whereas the red spiral is going off on the edge. So I think maybe two colors and um, you could also do a variegated red and a variegated green, you know, have the best of both worlds. So hope that helps, dear. All right. Okay, now Tom, get me back to portraits or facial features as we called it. Okay, so um, those of you that have been following along and have, have submitted um, quilts for this, know that um, the facial features, we started with four and then we skipped over to backgrounds and then we came back to finish up um, the, the facial features um, with like, not just features, but like hair and glasses and mouths and smiles, teeth and stuff like that. So, um, so this is a whole mixture of all of them um, in, uh, in alphabetical order. So Brenda, this one here, this portrait is, is from the beginning where it's talking about making more of an improvisational um, face, working quickly, using um, all sorts of, of fabrics that you might not normally use for a, a face, just to familiarize with what you can do with fabrics in creating a face. And the whole idea with these faces was that they don't have to be anybody. You know, people are afraid of faces, afraid of portraits, but look, look at Barb's here, Candida at Carnival. So, you know, take some great fabric that you've got. And she's, you know, Barb was saying that she worked from a, a fabric, you know, had all these different pieces in it. At least that's the way I understand it. Um, and so all these different um, patterns in one piece of fabric. So. And, you know, all of us have stuff like that, that you can't categorize the fabric because there's so much going on, but look what a great exercise she did. And that's, you know, just so fun. Um, Lynn, um, this has such a very soft feel to it. And so Lynn is working more with values. She's working with colors and values. So she has the light colors has chosen one side of the face to be light, another to be dark. And, um, you know, using the, the, again, using the, the patterns in your fabric as, um, you know, for contours. I have lovely eyes. I love the eyes and the eyelashes that she added to this. And um, she it's a pixie, I think she called it, if I remember right. She, this was in a blog post too that we, we put out. So um, I kind of talked about it a little more, but, um, you know, in the hair, it just, you know, just has such a lovely feel to it. And it reminds me, I did a series of nymphs one time, like seasonal nymphs. And this reminds me of that. And I had such a, a fun time with, with making those way back when. And it, was, and it was a way of letting go. Again, it just has to look like, you know, a human, um, which this, you know, which they all do, but it's just an exercise in order to familiarize yourself with doing a portrait. Um, this one just makes me laugh. It's, it's um, like a, a green man, yeah, garden man, a green man, but she's turned it into kind of a more of a, it looks more like a clown or something, but, or maybe lichen or, or moss or something growing on the tree, but you can see her inspirational photograph below. And I love those little ornament, those garden ornamentations too. So, um, and again, nice use of the fabric. I mean, just look at the, the different values she chose, like just in the nose and the mouth. Um, she created that nose just with one piece of fabric, picking out the lights and the darks to help, um, to help create the actual, the, the, um, the outline and the lights and darks of the nose. So it's really letting your, your fabrics work very well for you. And then the finished um, version here um, so yeah, so here she'd been wanting to do a less realistic collage and, and here she goes. She had some, some fun um, working with the fabrics. Um, Julie, uh, Julie took one of my classes in California um, last year. So uh, she has been, I know that she did a very intricate um, red panda. And I think we had that, I know we had it in the finish line blog post. So you could always put her name into the, the search bar and find it. Um, and it was very intricate. There was a lot going on. So I imagine, Julie, you had a lot of fun doing this face uh, where you didn't have to worry quite so much about it. Um, oh, yeah, there you go, the red panda. Yeah. And so, yeah, so she wants to work towards doing uh, portraits of, of her grandchildren. And this is a really good exercise to 
to learn how to work with fabrics for lights and darks, especially because that's what you want for the facial features, especially, you know, the face itself, the, the curves, the contours, the dimension of the face, light comes forward, dark recedes. So here, Alicia, um, we have her, the start of her piece. And then here as it goes along, I love those lips, just puckery little singing, humming, <laughs> humming nymph or something. This is great. I love looking at these pieces. I love seeing what you guys do with all the fabrics. It just makes me smile. So thank you so much. Um, Julie, so Julie's been in a couple of my classes too. Uh, and here she's really stretched and taken um, from one contrast, taken two contrasting colors on, on either side and then join them in the middle. So that's a little more, um, that's definitely a bit um, ambitious. So that's great. And um, yellow is the common denominator and where she can work towards in the center. So, oh, look at that. Oh, look at those eyes, Julie, lovely eyes. The one on the right, um, well, I like both of them, but and they both have like built in highlights. So this is a good example of using another way of using your fabric to work for you, do the work for you. Um, she didn't have to make her little highlights in the eyes. And that's actually a question I get a lot. Do you add highlights to the eyes and and how do you do it? Well, I look for fabric that has it already there, just like Julie did. Sandy, now Sandy has submitted what, like four to no, five pieces to us in um, this collection, the slide collection. So this is, she had a spiral and then now we set the portrait. And she said, been glued and re-glued oh so many times. So yes, that happens. And that's why you do a little smearing of glue underneath. You can pull it up. And if you ever get too heavy on the glue, it's water soluble glue. So you can just spritz it or dab a little water on it wait a few seconds, it'll dissolve it and, and lift up. But it's also a reminder, none of these are to be washed. Do not throw them into the, so into the washing machine. It won't give you a good result. All right, so, um, yep, and she's warming up to do something of her, grand, her grandson as well. Do we have a few, yeah, here, I knew we had something, um, another step coming up. So now that portrait is um, filled in most, yeah, well, it's filled in. She's going to trim the, the edge a little bit yet. So very nice. Again, the eyelashes. I love what you guys are doing with these eyes. Um, here's another one from Sandy. So this is one of the newer ones that I haven't, um, that came in in the last couple days. Um, inspired by her gray hair. All right. She grew in a few years ago. And yes, things are wonky, completely fun. Oh, and thank you, Sandy. Um, you guys have added light and fun to my year too. It says, thank you. And yep, and then there's another one of Sandy's coming up right there. And you know, Sandy, weirdly enough, this looks like two different relatives of mine. So, you know, so who is this? Oh, this is your grandson. This is your granddaughter-in-law. All right. Um, so, oh yeah, right. And then your grandson is coming up at the end. That's right. Okay. So she um, started One Direction um, and then as to make this into a sun face, but then she turned it into a little more of a realistic portrait, kind of a stylized realistic portrait. But, you know, I can see somebody in it um, like this really, this is a, a real person. Like I said, I could, it could be two different relatives of mine. Um, and I, I just love that. I think that it's it's playful. It's um, it's impressionistic. Not everything you do has to be a photo, you know, photo realism of 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 the person you're trying to depict. Um, you have the photos, you know, and they're probably you know many of them are just beautiful photos that people come when they come to classes or something, and they're great photos and they want to do them exactly. But you have it as a photo, you know, do something that puts your artistic flair into it and take some chances. And I think this is a great detail, a great example of that. Kelly, now Kelly um, sent this to us. I had, um, <coughs> I've worked with her once um, on this piece in, a, um, in one of the coaching sessions. 
And these glasses look great, Kelly. Um, you've, you've done these since, since the coaching and they look great. And now it is, is, I hope for you, it's moved out of the messy, scary stage because that's something um, Kelly was um, telling me about because she had the drawing and she did a, she did a good, good um, rendition of the drawing. And then she had, she started with a nose, which is exactly what I tell people to do. You know, we did that, um, the feature, the facial features of the, the portrait um, Thursday nights. And I said, start with the nose. And she did exactly that. She started with a nose, had this nose on top of a drawing, and it looked so out of place because there's just this, you know, realistic nose and then a drawing. And so I said, next thing you do, do the glasses because then it starts, um, you know, it, it's not just a nose hanging out smack dab in the middle of the collage. So I hope you are over or getting over that that um, scary stage because this looks great. And I love what you've done with the, the center of the glasses, um, just the reflections of the universe, it looks like. So um, wonderful direction. All right, so now, um, oh, her, okay. So this is her friend's daughter is a close up now um, of Nora. All right, beautiful. And I'll look, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of it, Kelly. So keep going, keep getting inspired. You're doing a beautiful job. Now the next section is one from, inspired by um, a couple of nights that were a little closer, they were November. We did two nights of really all I did in the presentation was draw and show you how to take a photo of somebody you know and um, translate it into a moon or a sun. So you kind of have that mixture of using realistic um, features and something stylized and fanciful. So it takes some of the pressure off and, um, but it still gives you a little more practice, a little further practice in doing something realistic. And Karen, I like these. Um, so she's, uh, this is the same moon um, in the two photos I just showed you. And um, she's been playing with different backgrounds. So she does the moon first. And that's one of the things you can do for backgrounds is create your design and then you tack it in place and then you cut away the foundation that you were gluing to. Um, cut away from the edges. It's still, you know, underneath holding your collage together. And then you can move your subject onto different backgrounds and try it out. And um, what she's doing here, she's taking photographs and then you can flip back and forth the photographs and see which ones you like better or what um, what you may like to look for instead. Remind so, the huh? The oh yeah, um, I'm, I'm, Tom asked me to remind you to ask questions. Um, they might not have time to write stuff because I'm talking, you know, <laughs> I'm not giving you time to write questions, am I? Oh, well, if you have questions, just ask them and Tom can find the, the stuff later on and we'll address them if that's the case. <laughs> but we still have more question time coming up later, so no worries. Okay, Dolores, um, work in progress. Um, it's supposed to look like her son-in-law, <coughs> excuse me, um, has a small beard and mustache. So I can see that the beard is coming up right down in that white area um, underneath, um, is at least I think, or maybe it's coming up in, yeah, I think that the, the um, well, that'd be the mustache. That's the mustache, and there's the lips, and there's the beard. And there's the beard. And well, the beard. Okay. okay. But it looks like that's a chin down there. So I think you have a little more. Anyway, Tom and I have a, have a difference of opinion right now, which we won't share with you. Okay, so um, the hair, Dolores, the hair is is great. I love that. It's like, it's like the moon is up there in some great, you know, astral wind or something. That's, that's lovely. I like that. Okay, so keep going. Have fun with this. Dolores has a question. Oh, Dolores has a question. How can I make the center more round? And Dolores is from Grand Rapids. Um, you make the center more round by um, trimming. Okay, so you worked from my pattern from the book. So for the roundness, and here I'm gonna do a little annotation, guys. I have a chance here to do some 
annotation with my little annotation tool. Okay, so um, somewhere underneath here. So, okay, so you've got, there's the pattern. And I know that right around here is the circle for, now I'm doing this with my mouse, so it's not gonna be perfectly circular. The, the drawing is though, the, the pattern, whoops, sorry, got off there. Um, well, no, it probably comes up like this. So Dolores, I know that the pattern is drawn as a circle. So if you wanna make it a circle, you need to stick to the pattern, at least up to like this point here, and then maybe somewhere, I'm not quite sure where, oh, I know what it is, hold on. So if I used what I can see from the, the border design, see the circle is kind of up, oh, that's the top of the moon. And then I think it was right around here that the moon kind of made its own circle inside, something like this. So I think it was like, yeah, that's probably what you're doing right here. Um, but anyway, there are lines underneath, um, underneath this fabric and underneath this fabric that um, I'm making a, a fairly educated guess that those are not cut to those lines. Um, so as long as you do that, that, that would do it. So what I would do is I would take out this piece right there. Just take that out temporarily, okay? So that you can see where your lines are. And then, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a line under there that's creating that crescent. And this fabric should go to the line wherever it happens to be. If it's all the way where I drew it, great. If I drew it wrong and it's up here, that's fine too. Just cut and, and collage these pieces up here to the line and then cut or piece these pieces down here to the line. You do that first because that crescent moon is on top of the background. And you wanna do the crescent moon first so you see the lines, so you don't get off you don't, you don't um, stray off those lines because they're visible, they're right there. You cut to them and then, then you bring this fabric, this one right here, back into the mix by tucking it under those lines, those fabrics that are so nicely cut to your line now. And that's how you get, um, that's how you make something that's, uh, you know, circular, you, you have to stick to the line. As it is, I mean, it isn't, it isn't, you know, the question I have to ask you is, does it need to be circular, you know, or do you just make an interesting crescent? And if it's circular, it's circular, and if it's not, it's not, you know, I mean, it's a little more loose, and I think that would be fine too. So, you know, cut it to the circle if you want, but I'm liking what you got going already. So, so there, um, keep going. You know, be a little different. You don't have to stick to the line. And um, unless you want the practice. Okay, so Karen. So Karen has a moon face started here. It's a dark moon. All right. So, um, and I love the colors that you've got, <coughs> that you got going there. And here she's a little farther along and it has a moon glow to it. That's one of the the options that you can do, you know, you can do those rays however you want, but I love looking up at a full moon or a moon of any sorts and has a um, some sort of glow around it. And here she's finished it now. So, um, so here she's talking about, um, you know, um, started because of the online workshop. And um, it's also in the serendipity quilts, both the sun and moon patterns are in my serendipity quilts book. And they're also available online as separate patterns as well. And um, she said that she used her son as a model. It doesn't really look like him, but she knows it is. And so that's that's good. If you know, you know, you this is for you. And I think that if you get inspiration from, or if your inspiration changes as you go, that's fine. That's going with the muse. So congratulations to you. You got it done. And yes, now you move on to the next. With each project, you learn something new. So here is um, Sandy's. I believe this is the the last. This is the last. Um, oh no, there's a whole other section of. Yeah. 
Um, this is the last in the portraits section. So Sandy Zuby. Hmm? Oh, did she have another question? Um, okay, sorry, Dolores, I missed it. How do you approach the triangular border around the moon? Um, so first, what I've done, okay, and, and again, you can be as loosey-goosey as you want on this, but I did, um, what I did on my moon is I trimmed it to the line, the, the, the circle of the moon, the actual circle all the way around here. So just like I said, to, tr to trim this inner circle, um, when I was done with everything on the inside of that, of this outer circle or the middle circle, I trimmed everything to it. So this was cut away, this was cut away, you know, all the way around. So it was a nice smooth edge. And then I tucked, I'm gonna change color now, I'm gonna do yellow. I tucked um, whatever fabric I was using for the rays underneath. And then I just glued it, you know, right down in here. So that way you, you have, all you have to do is cut like a, a right angle and tuck, it doesn't really matter what's happening in here. It can be all, you know, irregular, but you just have the right angle sticking out and then you, um, the rest of it goes under and you just glue it under here. And that's how I did the rays. And then this was this edge then created another zigzag as it went around. And then I turned around and tucked a different fabric. So let's use an aqua blue. Then I tucked another fabric that I cut at a slight um, curve. I'm gonna change that so it's red so you can see it better. Um, cut that as a slight curve. And I could kind of cut that in my hand and it usually matched up pretty well, but you can trim it down to the edge if it is you want. And then that tucked in under like this as a bigger piece. All I had to do was cut one curve, tuck it under the rays. So that's part of doing things top down. So the first thing is to, um, to do the, you know, first you do the moon, right? First you do the moon, then you tuck the the background behind the moon under there, and then you tuck the trim, tuck and trim the rays, and then you tuck and trim this the background of the rays, and then the but whatever comes behind here is the last thing you do, number five. So let me know if that didn't answer your question, Dolores. And I think as we moved um, forward here, um, I think uh, here we have um, Karen. That's what Karen did. Let's see, whoops, can you go back? I'm sorry, Tom, go back one more for me. There we go. So it looks like Karen um, cut triangles and laid them against it. So that's another way you can do it. But I do like kind of trimming and tucking under, trimming and tucking under. So however it works, Dolores, you just do it that way. It's all a learning experience. And sometimes I think if people just do things and don't worry so much about, you know, how things have to be. So, all right. So now we've got Sandy Zuby. Um, this is her grandson. And, um, you know, this is, I think, her fifth piece that she's done. So she's getting lots of practice this year. Congratulations, Sandy. And this looks great. I, you know, this is what a, what a lovely portrait you're doing here. Um, great use of, of the patterns and the fabrics and really loose too. So this is a really good example um, for being loose, using the, the pattern, the, the, the design as a jumping off point, and then letting it have a life of its own, which is, is a is exactly what Sandy did in this finish. So here you go, guys. You're worried about following the lines. Look at this lovely portrait. Um, and it's, it's, it's ethereal, it's kind of smoky. It's like clouds moving this way and that, you know, who knows what's going on here. But I just, you know, I just thought this was lovely. So, um, and oh, you know, I just noticed the cars. There are cars worked into that. Um, into the background. So uh, for those of you that, that don't see them, I'm gonna point them out. They're kind of fun. So you've got cars back here. Yeah, there you go. 
all sorts of stuff. So I'm assuming that that says something about him. So she's done this portrait of her grandson and she's worked in things that are important to him. And since I see so many stars, I'm, it's the cars, I'm guessing that's one of them. There's some writing there. I don't know what it is, but hmm? a fish. Oh, there's a fish. Look at that. There's a fish right kind of above his forehead. There you go. Very cool. All right. I love this. Good going, Sandy. And please keep sending things in so I can, you know, for finish line or, you know, whatever. I just... It'll be fun to see um, you and everyone else as you progress along this. So progress in these, these pieces in the fabric collage. All right, so others. This is the others category. Um, we had things that were kind of one of a kind pieces. Now, in one of the Thursday nights, I did a fish. I did an improv fish and started a timer for 10 minutes just to see how far I could get. It was a, a cha online challenge that I haven't repeated because it was a little stressful, but um, it was fun to do. And I kept going the next day with it too. And so she might've done that um, for this one, um, but she does talk about backgrounds and there was a series a four part series on backgrounds. And this looks lovely. I just, I just like it. It's so wonderful. Um, all sorts of things that I can look at. And that's what I, that's what I enjoy. I like looking at something again and again and seeing new things. I see these snails on the bottom. She used some fabrics really nicely to make um, background snails, you know, right down here on both sides. So there's a snail shell. And then here's the little, um... oh, you think it's seaweed? I... Yeah. Well, but look at how she did it on this side. I see, think I think it's antennas or whatever snails have. <laughs> So anyway, again, Tom and I disagree. Um, so, so, oh yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so yep, it was one of my fish patterns. This was the lionfish pattern. And so you did a great job with that. That side fin is, is, a, is a challenge in its own and you did it, that looks great. I can see that it's a side fin, so very good. And she cut the foot fish out and put on a background. Um, sparkle netting um, on top and uh, sheer fabric for jellyfish. Okay, yeah, right. So the jellyfish has, has some of that um, like iridescent fabric. So very nice, Judy. Oh, here's some details. Look at that. Detail with a snail and his antenna on the bottom. <laughs> and that's nice, Judy. I like the, um, the little bit of contrast threads that you put around here to um to create a little motion a little bubbles or something and i just noticed you have some of that um iridescent fabric around like a um uh, kind of like an electric haze around the fish that's very interesting it sets it apart and i didn't notice it right away so good going that's an interesting thing i would add a little bit more um shimmer to your underwater um creation and here's some of the um, in progress work, um, in, prog in progress um, uh, photos. So thank you very much for sending them in. Look at all the different fabrics you're using. And that really adds depth and layer to the whole piece. So very nice. Yep, nice use of designs. So Kim, so Kim, uh, no one has, I don't think that I can remember anyone doing a Michelangelo. Um, oh no, Leonardo da Vinci, sorry, da Vinci. Oh, okay, yes. Um, so um, Vitruvian Man, um, I wouldn't have remembered that offhand, but I did recognize it when you, when you said it. And what, yeah, this is lovely. And I know that there's a close-up of the, the face coming here. So um, uh, again, great use of the fabrics and very, um, very impressionistic and very um, op art again, and a kind of, you know, unexpected. It's, a, it's an interesting contrast. Oh, I'm trying to get back to the first one. Thank you, Tom. Um, it's an interesting take on something we're, we're familiar with in such a very um, realistic and you know, Leonardo da Vinci of, of, you know, medieval times and, and um, to do it in this rainbow sort of fashion with all our wonderful fabrics that we have and the prints is a really interesting contrast. So very, very cool, Kim. Thank you. 
we have um, Lise from the book Serendipity Quilts and the Thursday Night Sessions, another moon um, portrait um, rendition. And look at the use of the fabrics there. That's beautiful. So this is, I love when I see things like these um, spirals coming down because it really, you know, in a, in a face, facial features, that, that curve going from the, um, the top of the forehead down along the nose and then into the smile line that that's she's she's um created that line that form and movement of the face in a very um subtle and beautiful way so very nice um whoops and let's see and then you worked some fun stars into it a lot of stars in here so that's nice that's very appropriate isn't it so beautiful very nice lease Okay, whoops, I gotta get out of the annotation here. And then she's got the sun to go with it. And yep, again, beautiful eyes. The, um, you know, they're above the eyes, the line, the dark line above the eyes. Again, Lisa's doing such a beautiful job with using the patterns and the fabrics. And Yep, and the value, so she's got a light on one side. So here's the light. That's something to think about if you guys are gonna be working on anything. Um, you know, if you want to make a, a sun face yourself. So I talk about having a light source, you know, even though this is a sun, right? Um, that's okay, a sun can have a light source too. So, and that kind of um, gives you a focus and also might stretch you in, working more with values than you might otherwise. So this cheek here is the light, is a very light fabric on the light side of the face. Here on the darker shadowed side of the face is lighter within this range of fabrics, though it would be quite dark on the other side. So um, you still work with lights and darks, but within a certain range of lights and darks. So that's, again, another type of exercise and challenge you can give yourself with these, these things, these pieces. Okay, and then Christine. Um, oh, Christine is the one with the spiral, right? Who did earlier, right? Tom, yeah, so I think, Christine, you had a spiral in earlier. And I'm wondering, let's see, did you do um, some of your beadwork on this one? I think we have a close-up coming up. Yeah, okay, so, yep, I got the right person. Okay, so Christine, and yes, a bag of scraps, and that is a really wonderful challenge. Now, um, there was one of the Thursday night presentations from the first series, the Marabou Stork, and though that's the one that I did the improv fish with. It was all with scrap fabrics. So that is a really fun challenge to do, and um, a great exercise with really just about any subject matter. Um, and, you know, she's done it here with this cute little seahorse. So very nice. And um, here now is some of the beadwork that Christine has done on it. Beautiful. Oh, and there it is, framed and finished. Okay. And I think that is it. That is it on our slides. Okay, so now, um, any questions? So you guys have been asking a few questions, but I know there's quite a few out of you. Juliet, hi, Juliet. Um, not a question, but wanna thank you for all the Zoom opportunities you and Tom provided. There were times throughout the year when it was truly a lifeline. Oh, thank you. It meant so much to just see a friendly, familiar face and be inspired and encouraged. And thank you to all the collage artists who shared their creativity so generously with all of us. Uh, yes, thank you to all those collage artists for me. And thank you, Juliet. Um, Juliet makes so many comments on the blog posts and stuff. and. Um, she's been in a couple of my classes and would, would have been in one of my classes this year. Um, it was the first class that got canceled. So Juliet, I miss you. And I can picture you and hear you with every comment. So thank you. Okay. Oh, um, oh and Rebecca says, hi, everyone. Hope oh, Tom took it away. 
Oh, that's the chat. Okay, sorry. Tom put the chat up there. So, um, so okay. All right. So, oh, we got Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Um, also want to say how much these classes have meant to me this year. I so looked forward to each one. You're a fabulous teacher. What can we look forward to next year? Hey, Kathleen, thanks for the segue. <laughs> <laughs> and we really didn't plan that, guys. <laughs> Tom's over there laughing, too, because the next thing I was going to tell you guys is 2021. What's ahead? <laughs> so, um, you know, we kind of... Um, uh, this year has been so unplanned and um, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, next year. Um, oh, and Sandy, um, uh, thank you. Sandy says, thanks for all the wonderful workshops. Hope there are many planned for 2021. Well, that's what we're getting to as well, Sandy. Um, so first of all, okay, first things first, and then I'll get back to, I'm gonna, we'll get back to questions after this. Um, so, First, we are going to take a break. Um, you know how we took a break in the summer? Well, we're going to take a break now. And we're going to take it, just say, through January, we're taking a break. Um, aside from any private fabric collage coaching, you know, if people need help along the way, um, you know, you can still sign up for that stuff. But um, we need just a little time to kind of get our heads around what is next. But we do have some ideas. That's what I'm going to tell you. So secondly, um, uh, we're thinking ahead to the continuing uncertainty of travel and in-person classes, unfortunately, going into next year. Um, things still aren't really looking great out there, and especially not for being close in a class, and you know, you all know it. So, um, so what we're hoping, what we're planning on doing um, is we are planning to transition to full-fledged live and online workshops sooner rather than later. And by later, I mean at the beginning of this year, we thought, oh yeah, maybe in a couple of years we'll do that. Well, no, we're like ready to do it now. You know, we've gotten a lot of practice with these live things this year. Um, and we have to do a little more tweaking to figure out how it could work as, um, you know, basically, um, you know, uh, multi-day virtual classes and, and developing those. And with that in mind, um, we, we're not going to be able to keep up the pace and schedule of these Thursday night presentations as well. But um, I don't want to lose touch with all of you. We've, we have this little community going, and I've heard that from other people in other comments, and um, that it is, it's kind of like I'm getting to know you guys. Um, and um, so we don't lose, want to lose um, in touch with you, and um, especially those of you that have been well, with any of you, but, but, you know, some of you have been coming back every week, the entire year, and that's just so wonderful for us. And I do have some ideas, but need time to flesh them out. So please keep a lookout through my blog for um, some of those upcoming plans. Um, and third, before anyone asks if those upcoming plans include animals and pets, um, yes, I want you to know that one of my 2021 ideas is to create a separate teaching module on pets to work in conjunction with the online masterclass manual, because that's the other direction we're, we're going. There's the virtual stuff, there's the online stuff. Um, perhaps during the creation of that class, I'll be able to share some of what I'm doing with you on a monthly Thursday night presentation to have some of the live stuff. Um, I just don't know yet, and I won't know until I get into it in January. So again, keep, you know, keep a lookout for that stuff. Um, we have your emails, we, you know, or oh, actually we don't have everyone's emails, but anyway, it'll be on the blog. So keep an eye on that. Okay. Now, um, finally, my first future goal is to finish the Celestial Portraits Manual for the master class. Started working on it in September, and that's why we know that I can't do Thursday night presentations and the, the Celestial module. And here you go is one of them in progress. Now, I know that it's going to take me the rest of this year into January um, to be finishing up this module. And this is an example. It's um, it, the, in these modules that we were planning, the celestial portraits and then the pets. Um, 
they're designed to um, work with the Fabric Collage Masterclass Manual. And um, if you don't already own it and are interested, I also want you to know that the price is going to be increasing on January 1st. So it's $149 now, it's gonna to increase to $199. But you guys do qualify for the $30 off in any case um, for as, as students of these Thursday night presentations. So there's a place there where you can contact Tom and you can request your discount. Um, regardless of what, you know, if you get it now or later. But let me tell you, the masterclass is basically a textbook and reference manual for all the steps of fabric collage that I teach in a class. So if you are in a class of mine, there's like six steps that I talk about over the course of the five days. And that's how I've broken up the manual. And um, plus, in addition to um, those steps and talking about it like I was teaching a class. Um, there's We've added videos and links to blog posts that um, cover those steps in even um, a more extensive way. So it's kind of like a multimedia textbook. And once you purchase it, you own it forever. Here's a question we should answer right now. Oh, I should answer a question right now, Tom says. From Kathleen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kathleen says, for those who currently own the masterclass, will the new modules be included for us? Um, no, they are add-ons. So the add, they're going to be add-ons, and we're keeping them at like $49. So, um, and that's a point um, that I get to later as far as, you know, by doing it this way, it actually um, works for both of us. Um, so it's easier for me to put together, and it's it's an add-on price that's that's less than the cost of the module. Um, or the, the manual, sorry, the manual. So um, so the ma um, so once you purchase the, the masterclass manual, you own it forever. And it's been out for almost three years now. And students have been making amazing collages using it alone as a guide. And now we're starting to, to develop modules to address specific, to address, a, to address the specifics of certain subjects. Um, that people are interested in asking us about. Um, I wanted to extend um, the, uh, can you get back to the, the sun, Tom? Um, so I wanted to extend on the celestial portraits faces. I know they're in the book, but in the book, it's all about scraps, working from scraps to create something um, in a very intuitive and um, spontaneous sort of way, you know, serendipitous way. This now I'm taking, you know, larger pieces of fabric and cutting them down. So here you have a larger piece of fabric. You cut it down to create a pallet and that goes to the side and then you use that in your piece. And then you cut that down to create the smaller pieces of fabric. So um, you get smaller and smaller pieces, but this is, um, I, I, I work this way and I work with scraps, but this is usually how people come to my classes. They come with these, you know, beautiful, um, you know, yardage of, of fabrics, and then, you know, how do you start? So that's where these celestial, the celestial portraits module is varies from what's in the book. The book is presenting it one way to approach it, and this presents another way of approaching it. So I've, you know, and it's also like an update, a 10 year update since I wrote it. So I've learned stuff myself since then. Um, so, um, so, you know, we're gonna do the celestial portraits, you know, pets and, and more will be coming up. And since the modules are add on to and refer to the masterclass, it, it's more efficient for me and not needing to, repeating, to repeat certain steps like how to draw a pattern or how to prepare for quilting because it's the same no matter what your subject is, those steps are the same. So I deviate, you know, where it comes specifically to what fabrics might you look for, for a sun or for a moon or for a pet, for fur, for scales, whatever. Um, and, um, and for you, it's more cost effective um, rather than choosing between purchasing complete individualized classes each time I release something new, it's a one-time cost for the master class, and then the add-on modules are for a lower cost. Virginia is still unclear how the master class manual works. Okay, so Virginia is asking, please explain the basics of the master class manual, i.e. how does it work? Um, I, I, it's a website and it has videos. Okay, so you, 
would have a, what is it called? A, a name and a password, right? So uh, a, username. a username. So you make a username and a password. And then you can log on to the site. So this masterclass is on a site, a website. It's on my website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on my website. But you can only access it through username and password. And then it's set up in six steps. Like, um, it, you know, it takes you everywhere from choosing a photo to finishing off the edges. Um, like, you know, earlier, um, Julia, Julie asked me um, about how to stretch it over canvas. Well, it's in the masterclass manual. Um, how do you draw a pattern? It's there. How do you select fabric? Or what are you looking for in fabric? It's there. And also, there are links conveniently you know, listed for you if you want to learn more about something through one of my blog posts. So it does repeat some of that information in a way that you, I send you back to the blog post because we've got five years of blog posts behind us that um, Tom has kind of collated and organized into this manual. So it's right there. If you want to know, you know, you say, wait, I think I saw a blog post about um, how to glue. What one is it? Well, you can go to the manual and you go to the how to get started and you see the part about gluing and there's the link for the blog post. So um, like I said, it's like a, it's a multimedia sort of thing. Um, anything else that I didn't say, Tom? I think you have it. Okay. If I didn't cover that, let me know. Okay. Um, but anyway, we'll certainly be covering um, the modules. We'll be telling you more about the modules and blog posts um, to let you know what's developing and when and all that sort of stuff. But if you're ready to go deeper into fabric collage and you don't already have the manual, like I said, it has been out for three years, so you might have it. Um, please do, do keep in mind the price increase. Um, and one thing I did want to say that might kind of address um, Virginia's question there is um, that the, once you have the manual, if we do make updates every so often. So every year we have made an update by adding some new stuff and kind of revamping it. And, you know, we've written another, you know, 50 some odd blog, blog posts. And so we start putting new links into it so that it's still kind of continuously kind of collates it and organizes all that information for you. Huh? For free. Oh yeah, for free. That's like automatic. You know, we just do it, update it, it's done. Um, and so that is one of the things that you do get. You will get those continual updates for free, but the modules do, you know, are, since it's a whole brand new stuff, we, we do have to charge for that. Okay. Um, so anyway, those are the plans. Um, uh, and I hope, um, should I, well. No, go ahead and do that. Okay, those are the plans and I hope you will be around in one way or another to see them happen um, on maybe a monthly Thursday night or in a virtual class or as the owner of the masterclass um, manual or even just through the blog. You know, there's a lot of different ways I have for us to keep in touch. And, you know, if you do write something or a comment, say, you know, hey, I'm part of the Thursday night community or something like that. But um, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at recognizing uh, your names as they're scrolling through every week. So, um, but let's do keep in touch. Um, so Nancy, um, are you going to cancel your in-person workshops next year? Um, I have been discussing with venues about that, um, but at the moment um, we haven't set anything in stone, but um, it's, in, in my opinion and everything I'm hearing, it's, it's not looking good um, for, you know, but I'm taking it basically month by month, season by season. Um, I don't teach until March. So, you know, I can, you know, sit back a little bit and see what's going on, but I'm kind of counting the months and thinking that's, you know, three months away. And I don't know about you, but us in Maine, we're doing worse now than we were any other time this year. Um, as far as cases go and warnings go and stuff like that. So that was nine months behind us and three months ahead. I don't know. Um, there is a vaccine, but um, I'm not, I'm not going to be even in line to get it until like April or something. So um, I'm, I'm not going to be safe for other people or myself until then. So I don't know, you know, we're just going to have to see what happens. So, but that's all I can tell you right now. Sorry, Nancy. Um, uh, Hedy. Uh, can you use a manual on iPad only? Oh, no, it's on like 
everything. You can use it on your phone, on a computer. I, I would say a computer would be best because you've got a bigger screen. But yeah, you can use it on any, um, right, Tom? Any device, mm -hmm. any, any device that you can get onto a website and you should be able to, and you'll be able to do it. Uh, oh, Virginia, there you are. Do you mean it's on the computer or in book form? It's on the computer. So yes, it's on the computer because you just can't put links to blog posts in a book. <laughs> or use video, yeah. You know, so many, it's, it's like different, people learn different ways. You know, some people learn from a book, they wanna see it. So there's writing, you know, there's writing to read. Um, there's videos to watch, there's photos to look at. Um, so we've tried to make it, you know, however you learn, we're trying to cover something for everybody. Um, but yeah, that's why it's not in the book. And also it would be one big book. Um, you know, I've, I've put two books together and there are so much, so much information you have to cut because you only have so many pages to work with and you can't make pictures like really, really tiny. You have to make them big enough for people to actually see. So, you know, you put a picture on a, on a, on a screen and you can enlarge it. Um, I think you can, right? Mm -hmm. Can you enlarge it? Yeah. You can make something larger to look at detail, you know, so it's just so much more versatile that I kind of see the masterclass manual as my newest book. Um, it's, it's a reference manual and it covers so many things. Uh, okay, Sarah, um, how much for the modules? Well, we are gonna be starting at least on the beginning ones, um, unless, you know, a couple of years down the road, I don't know, but they're gonna come out at $49. So the first one is gonna be the, the, the sun moon, and um, and then, you know, we'll just go from there. But I, I assume that we're just going to keep it at forty nine dollars for a while. Uh, Nancy, um, can you buy a module without owning the masterclass? Um, uh, stay safe and healthy. Happy holidays. <laughs> Thanks. You too, Nancy. Um, but no, you can't buy a module without the masterclass because I reference um, so for instance, when I finish up with the sun face that I'm working on right now, um, I am going to say, okay, now I'm going to prepare it for quilting, check the masterclass manual on this step on such and such a page or however it is that I'm going to send you, it might just have a link that takes you right to the page. Um, and, um, for more information, because many people already know, you know, you don't need to pay for me to tell you that again. So each module takes out what is specific for that subject. When it comes to pets, we're going to look at fabric that's specific, um, the, the kind of stuff you look for to make furry, curly hair or long, straggly hair or, um, I don't know, noses, you know, uh, whiskers, whatever. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I'll talk about in there. But I'm not talking about that stuff in the in the Celestial Portraits module. So I'm able to really hone in on specific things you might be looking for in some sort of subject you want to do. And so those subjects will roll out, you know, however, whatever kind of time that I have to get them out. But I've got the, you know, the, the two different things in mind to, to start with. All the recipes are just saying how wonderful you are and wishing us <laughs> So Tom just told me um, uh, that everything else is, um, all, the all the other questions are, are comments, um, wishing us, you know, happy holidays and thanking us for the workshops and how wonderful we are. And, and I probably, you know, I'm <laughs> Tom doesn't think I should be saying all that. Um, but um, Thank you guys. You know, I will, I will take a look at, so we've got Sandy, um, you know, thank you, Bernadette, happy holidays. Um, and, you know, again, thank you guys for the inspiration you give me. You really have inspired me in ways that I hadn't expected. Like for instance, this, I put, I wanted to put some of the stuff we've talked about this year behind me tonight. And so this one of, of Sam, which hasn't progressed any more than, you know, that second draft or third, I think, no, I think it was a second draft um, now we we're talking about second drafts. I, I showed that one and um, hasn't progressed any more since then, but I want to finish that up coming up too. I want to get that finished for, for me and for Sam. Um, and I hadn't, I wouldn't have even gone in that direction. I don't think I would have been inspired if I wasn't working on trying to figure out things to inspire you guys. So, you know, it goes back and forth. And um, so thank you guys. Um, all right, so Judy, um, yes, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you. And this is all, um, thank you. And, 
and um, thanks. We've tried to, to make it look good for you on your end. <laughs> Um, and yes, it's so nice. Thank you all guys for, um, to all of you for sharing your projects with us, you know, the ones tonight. And like I said, please do, um, send, you know, keep sending us photos, um, like for the finish line, all that, all the work that was in progress, you know, definitely send them in. I mean, this, the, you know, this, the Thursday nights are kind of, you know, you know, kind of tapered down now. Um, I don't know what the future will be. So we'll just take it, you know, one day, one week, one month at a time and see what happens. Um, everybody stay really safe out there. And, um, and uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. So um, more, of more of the same. So, okay. So I guess, yep. Kisses to all you guys. Um, and thank you for, um, being a bit of a, an anchor and a rock for me this year. And um, thank you once again um, for joining me tonight throughout the year. And it's been a very big pleasure to spend time with you. And I do, you know, I, I, I really do want to get back together. So maybe it'll just be a reunion some point down the road, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And in the meantime, just take really good care of yourselves, okay? Um, like I said, Maine is, is, is not, we're, we're doing better than a lot of parts of the country, a lot of parts of the world, but, um, we're, you know, we're, we're, it, it's not looking great out there either. So, um, take care of yourself, stay safe and try to come up with, with fun things to do. You know, we're trying to try to, we're celebrating holidays in such a different way. And I hope you can come up with something and keep the spirits up and, um, and we'll, we'll get through it. Right. Um, remember, there's like 24 of these recordings. So if you ever have a Thursday night where you really want to watch me, you got the recordings, um, just put one on and there I am and <laughs> and I'll be with you in spirit. Um, so and speaking of that, a recording of tonight's presentation um, will be coming your way in the follow-up email tomorrow, which will contain a promo code and link for watching the recording for free. Also in that email, we're continuing our special offer to those who sign up for these Thursday night live presentations, which is student discount of 30 days, $30 off the price of the Fabric Collage Masterclass Manual, but it also applies to the Sea Turtle e-workshop. So maybe you don't really wanna go in the whole depth of the, you know, all the ins and outs of, of Fabric Collage um, that the manual would cover, but maybe you wanna do um, a Sea Turtle, um, a, a sea turtle um, design. And I take you in that EWE workshop, I take you step by step, beginning to end. You know, there's there's no reference to the manual on that. That's a standalone thing. You also get the discount on that if you would like it. So, and we'll be sending more links of information tomorrow um, that we feel like you, you might need or, you know, click on easy stuff. Okay, so until I see you again, um, stay healthy, stay sane, stay safe. Um, and let's keep on taking care of each other and the world, um, and ourselves by being creative. So take care, you guys. I have to go before I cry. <laughs> See you later.